Thank you for joining Kong Summit and see you next year. Thanks for having us. It's been great. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you for joining Kong Summit. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you. And let's make the next Kong Summit bigger and better. What great way to end this amazing Kong Summit by a cooking class by our very own um, Marco Paladino, uh, founder and CTO of uh, Kong. One of the great things about working with both Augusto and Marco is, has been their love for cooking. And um, with that, we want to share uh, all the great uh, things that I have learned from them with the uh, the rest of the, the world. And with that, uh, Marco, what are we doing today? Yeah, so today we're making pasta with um, pasta carbonara. Carbonara, you know, means coal mine worker in Italian. And, you know, there's lots of debate on how the pasta may uh, was born, but, but, you know, most likely it was born because the coal mine workers, after a long day of work, you know, in the mine, uh, they needed something at the end of the day to replenish all the nutrition that they've lost by working. And, uh, and this is a very simple dish with very simple ingredients that you can find pretty much everywhere, but it also very uh, caloric. So it is, um, it is a full dish per se. You know, once you have a good dish of carbonara, you really do not need anything else. The way we're going to be making it today, it is going to be the best carbonara you can, uh, you can find anywhere in the world, but in Rome. This is the traditional recipe like they do it in Rome. So in order to make the carbonara, we need to get guanciale. So this is pork cheek um, that's uh, you know uh, cut and aged, and it looks like bacon. It looks like pancetta, but it's not bacon and it's not pancetta because it comes from a different uh, part of the animal. Uh, guanciale it's very hard to find. You know, it took me many tries, and this one I found from this website uh, called Sonio Toscano which effectively um, they import it and then ship it to you. If you cannot find guanciale, and we're going to be sharing the link where we can find this, um, if you cannot find guanciale, then as a substitute, you can, you could use bacon or, or pancetta, but that's definitely a second choice. The first choice would be guanciale. Then uh, we're going to be having two different varieties of cheese, just because today I want to do this dish the right way. And so we're going to be having pecorino romano, which is a very salty, um, salty cheese that um, it's a ship, ship cheese from ship milk um, that's quite salty. Pecorino Romano, not to be confused with Pecorino Sardo, which is made in Sardinia. And then we're going to be having a little bit of a Parmigiano Reggiano, not to be confused with, not to be confused with a Parmesan that you would normally find in, uh, in, uh, in markets. Yeah, I mean, so this is the thing, right? This pasta dish would be very cheap to make in, in Italy because uh, everything comes locally. Like the cheese are Italian cheeses, right? The guanciale, you know, everybody does it in Italy. The pasta, we make it in Italy, right? And so it would be very cheap to make. In the U.S., this dish, it's just a little bit more expensive because we have to use these imported ingredients uh, and there is a markup on that. So the pasta, like I said, it's, um, it's the Rumo pasta. We can use any brand of Italian pasta. And uh, in particular, I'm using rigatoni right now. You know, you can find these in, at Whole Foods, like Sandeep said. And you can see there is some little lines in the rigatoni. These lines are very important. Do not make this pasta with, um, with uh, kind of a smooth, smooth pasta pieces but they have to be having these lines because these lines are going to be capturing all the sauce that we're going to be mixing the pasta with. So this is very critical and important in order to have a good, good outcome. Got it. Could we use spaghetti uh, pasta if, if you can't find any? You, you, could be using, you could be using spaghetti. And as a matter of fact, the carbonara with spaghetti is very popular. But because we're doing the traditional dish today, oh. the traditional dish, it, it is with rigatoni. Okay, so like I said, the ingredients of Sandeep have to be very, very good. And so we need to have some very good, uh, high quality eggs. Um, and again, I found these on Whole Foods as well. We need to have kosher salt. We need to have some very good extra virgin olive oil. Uh, we don't need the red wine for cooking the dish, but we're going to be using this later for drinking while eating the dish. And we need some white wine, can be cheap white wine, you know, cheap Chardonnay that we're going to be using to deglaze the guanciale uh, once it's cooking. 
All right. I have everything ready here, uh, Marco. And um, based on your instruction, I already have some boiling water uh, going on here. It, it's, uh, right now, Marco, it's just boiling water. Should I put anything in it? No, we're just boiling water so that we can accelerate the, the procedure. This is a pasta that we can make in 15 minutes, um, you know, when done right. You may notice, Sandeep, that I don't have any parsley, any peas, or any cream or heavy cream. This is because making this pasta requires us to create this uh, egg and cheese cream from scratch without using any other mm. product like a heavy cream or, you know, anything like that. Now, commonly, when we go eat this pasta in a restaurant, you know, because people don't really know how to make it as well, they may use cream or heavy cream to help themselves make these uh, this sauce but the sauce should not should not have any of those ingredients we are going to be making that cream ourselves exactly so that's this is what you were telling me that uh, this seemingly simple uh, dish um, has all these layers of uh, intricacies and that's what we're going to learn today so the water is boiling. I think that we should definitely start by cutting the guanciale. And we have to cut the guanciale in a very specific way. So as you can see, the guanciale okay. um, has a layer, an out outside layer that's uh, usually peppered, and then there is an inside layer. So what we're going to be doing is cutting very thick slices of guanciale. You have a larger piece, so I need more slices to match the, the quantity I need. But let me show you. So if okay. I... Uh, what I'm going to be doing is cutting pieces that are this thick, right? This thick. Okay. We want to have thick pieces of gonchale. And so we go ahead All right. and cut it. So Let me try it. Let me try it here. So maybe, okay. Marco, is this uh, the right size? Uh, yes, that's the right size. Maybe that's it's... the right size. No, that's the right okay. size. Okay. That's the right size. Okay. So, so how do how do they cure this, uh, uh, Marco de Gonchala? Like, um, is there a particular way they cure it and put pepper on it? Yeah. What's so the they put pepper. They put pepper. They put pepper around it, um, and then they let it rest for a few months. Now, the thing with many guanciales that we find online is that they're too salty. Mm -hmm. They're too salty because they put too much salt in order to preserve them. The one, I've, I've tried I've tried every guanciale you can possibly find and order online in the US. And this from Sonio Toscano uh, is the best guanciale, is the best guanciale you can possibly get. Uh, they sell it for $50 for two pounds, but two pounds is a lot. We can make, we can make probably, uh, you know, six, five, six dinners with it. Now we're going to take each and every individual piece of gonchale and we're going to be removing the borders of the guanciale, especially the yellow parts, oh. because the yellow parts are going to be giving a bitter taste to our sauce and we don't want that. So what we're going to be doing, Got if it. you look at what I'm doing right now, I am cutting, we still want the fat, right? But I'm cutting the mm. outer layer away as you can see, I'm cutting it away from the guanciale. And if there is any visible yellow part on the borders, on the sides of our guanciale slice, we want to cut it. So I'm, as Got you can it. see, I'm removing. And so at the end of the day, we're going to be having something like this. So we basically are peeling out, we're peeling out the outer layer. Now the water is boiling, which is, uh, which is great, uh, because uh, once we're done with this, we, are, we can basically start cooking the pasta. And as the pasta is cooking, we will prepare the sauce. And we will do it from scratch. So this is the traditional way of doing carbonara. So Sandeep, Sandeep, show me, show me your guanciale. Did you cut the outer layer? Yeah, is this good? Yeah, perfect. Yes, perfect. You don't have to be, okay. just cut you know, okay. a thin, just cut the thin, a thin slice, it doesn't have to be too thick, right? Because we want to have as more as much guanciale as we can. 
into the actual yeah that was I, that is exactly what i was wondering um you know uh i'm i'm, I'm actually losing some of the fat so that's why uh to your point i need to make a slightly thinner slice here so that we actually get the good fat in right are we going to be cooking uh, with some of that fat yes we're actually going to be preserving the fat we are removing and put it into the boiling mm. water but then we're going to be removing it prior to putting the pasta we just want we just want prior to eating the pasta we just want the 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 water to taste like the gonciale but we don't want to really eat it oh man this is making me so hungry marco this pasta was engineered to fill us up you know because of the coal mine workers back in the days and so if you are hungry you're not going to be hungry anymore after eating you know this reminds yeah, so me the, um of a different region the southern uh, spain uh with jamon uh, and and you know they have these um, uh, small uh, cafes in in southern spain uh, sevilla uh, and you know granada and uh, the, the smell of jamon is is what i'm feeling right now and it's like it's it's taking me back uh, to 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 southern spain oh my god i'm so hungry now but unlike prosciutto or hamon we cannot eat uncooked guanciale it has to be cooked otherwise it's not safe to eat okay so i have all these pieces so take the big ones you know take take the big ones that we can easily identify in the water you know we cannot we, could, we cannot uh mistaken them for pasta pieces take okay. take the big ones take the big ones and we'll take them and then put them into the water like this and the water in the meanwhile i'm just increasing my heat should be boiling and we just let it rest like that so this is good so basically we don't need um usually when with the uh, pasta you put uh, salt in the water and other things other flavoring so in this case we don't need that because they're going to get that flavor from from these cut sides but we still got to put the the salt right so the the, the pasta will the okay. the water will have to be salted but I'm not going to do it just now because I'm afraid that if we put salt now more water will evaporate between the time we finish our preparation and we start cooking the pasta therefore we mess up the salt and water ratio and it get, ends up being too salty got it yeah um, okay okay now that we have now that we have these big pieces of uh, bacon of uh, guanciale we are not done yet with the guanciale we have to cut stripes like this you see they're they're going to be this big like kind of a thick stripes of, okay. of guanciale got it okay and we will do that for every piece so this is a trick sandeep if you are hungry while you're cooking tell me uh huh while you're cooking while you're cooking take a different knife yeah you don't want to use the same knife that you use for cutting the guanciale and okay take the same knife and cut yourself a piece of parmigiano there you go i'm going to do that right now <laughs> you know they say if you're cooking the chef did you ever notice that every time there is a chef cooking the chef never uh -huh. eats with with people you know the chef always seems to be like sitting around enjoying himself and people they usually say but you should eat sit down and eat with us but the chef doesn't have to eat because the chef eats more than all of them combined by cooking and eating <laughs> <laughs> you know when uh, one time i happened to get to a restaurant around um 10:30 so before the restaurant had actually opened and i saw the entire staff eating and so um it's like before the restaurant actually opens for public they have already uh eaten the food and they are they 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 are ready to go uh, before the patrons start coming in it's a smart thing to do <laughs> yeah 
So you see what's the problem now with um, some cheese as we're cooking. The cheese is a little bit salty, right? So we want to start drinking. Yeah. I know. Oh, and, uh, I feel like opening the bottle now. <laughs> <laughs> you so, just read my mind. <laughs> Let's do it. So, so I ask him. Um, can my, we do it? Uh, Italian, um, yeah, we can do it, of course. And this is uh, just for drinking. So, so I ask an Italian friend of mine, what is, he's from Rome, and I ask him, what is the best wine you would suggest for Carbonara? And he said, you know, Stag's Leap, it's very good. The, the Cabernet Sauvignon, but you can also get a Dacorn Merlot. So we opted for a Stag's Leap this time. What my dad taught me to not uh, ruin the countertop is take a piece of a uh, paper towel and then put it around the bottle. So when the when you're when you're pouring when you're pouring the wine and the last drop falls down, it doesn't go all the way to the countertop. So, anyways, we got our wine. I had my cheese. It's time to drink it. So we got the cheese and we got Cheers, the wine. My friend. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. Mm. Oh, this is a very good wine. This is a very intense wine for a very intense, intense pasta. Like, uh, so for this pasta, we don't want to have fruity wines. We want to have something strong because, you know, again, this is a pasta mm. with, made with egg, with cheese, with, with guanciale. It's, it's, you know, there are strong tastes. And so we want something that's also strong to drink in order to be able to, to mix and match it very well. We are teasing ourselves and we're getting ready for the big meal. By the way, I want to show you the pasta right now with the fat, look at the coloring. The fat, it's melting in the boiling, in the, in the very hot water and it's gonna taste so good because the, the pasta will then absorb, it will absorb all of this water, right? Hey Marco, I'm also smelling it, man. Oh my gosh. I love the smell. It's like a, oh, yeah. it's like a hot, hot stew. I think before the wine, I like the uh, Pecorino. And after the wine, I like the other one. Well, good thing we have both, so we don't have to choose. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so this is what, what we're going to be doing. I don't feel comfortable turning on the guanciale until I know that I'm done with the cream with the egg and cheese cream that we're going to be making from scratch. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking our olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and put just a little bit into the, into the pan without turning on the fire, and then put the guanciale in, you know, mixing it with the, with the olive oil, but still off. So we're not turning on the pan just yet. So I'm going to be pouring a little bit of olive oil like this. Just enough for, for me to create this uh, kind of a oil bed for the guanciale. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the guanciale and transfer it into the pan, into this um, oil paddle that I've created, as you can see. So Marco, is that, is that maybe two tablespoons of um, olive oil? Yeah, yeah. So we don't want to have too much okay. oil. Okay. We don't have to, we don't want to have too much oil for a very simple reason. As the guanciale mm. will start cooking, the guanciale will also start releasing fat. And so that fat also is, you know, if you think about it, it's fat oil, right? And so we don't want to put too much olive oil, but just enough to start creating and triggering the, um, the reaction, you know, the Maliar reaction with the guanciale so that it starts cooking. Got it. Without without burning. Got it, got it. So basically, no oil floating around, just enough to coat each of these strips of uh, conchalas. You see, uh, me and Augusto are Italians, right? So when we started Mashe, even prior to Kong, uh, you know, we flew all the way from Italy to San Francisco to start the business. And, um, and, uh, and one of the things that we learned quite soon, because we couldn't afford to go out and, and buy food or, you know, at either restaurants, you know, we learned how to cook. And, and so, you know, um, carbonara, it's probably one uh, 
of the simplest things you know anybody can make. Uh, and this was our treat. So we wouldn't eat carbonara every day, of course. It would be a treat, you know, once a month, a nice dish of carbonara that brings you back to Italy, which was our home country. And today, right now, it's going to bring all of us uh, to Italy. All right, next, Marco. Yeah, I so, am it, so ready for this. So, okay. So next, next, we're going to take a big plate where we're going to be cutting, we're going to be cutting, uh, you know, uh, grating our cheese. And we're going to be using uh, a combination of pecorino and parmigiano with the following ratio. 70% should be pecorino and 30% or 20% should be parmigiano. So let's start with the pecorino first. We, have, we need to have a good amount of, of cheese here. Okay, so we're going to be grating our cheese with the following ratio. 70% pecorino, 30% parmigiano. So let's use the smallest size okay. that we have in our cheese grater. And let's grating it. We need to have a good amount, right? So, Sandeep, start doing it and don't stop until I tell you to stop. Okay. And I'm doing the parmigiano first, right? I'm doing the pecorino first. Oh, pecorino first? Okay. Yeah. Margo, are we going to be using the whole block of cheese? No. So, look at the, the amount of cheese I have in my plate right now. We are going to use approximately half of it of the one that you have. And then a little bit of Parmigiano so that we can create a blend of Parmigiano and Pecorino. I have, I have the Pecorino this much. Margot, this looks yeah. good. That, that's okay. perfect. Now 30%, no, 30% of uh, Parmigiano. All right, guys. That's so, right. Uh, Sandeep, I don't want to start okay. by my egg cream just yet. I want to start boiling the pasta and then start the, the, the egg uh, and cheese cream. And this is for a very simple reason. I don't want the egg to be left in the open air for too long and risk spoiling the egg. Carbonara, it's a very time sensitive dish. The timing is everything. From now on, everything is going to be timed perfectly. So we're going to be cooking the guanciale. As we're cooking the guanciale, we're going to be boiling the pasta. And as both of those, the guanciale and the pasta are cooking, we are going to be making our cream. From now on, we're going to be accelerate a little bit because this is the most critical part of making the carbonara. Up until now, we've been messing around. We cut the guanciale, you know, we, we grated the cheese. This is nothing. What we're going to be doing now is going to be a lot more intense and timing is everything. If we mess up with the timing, we're not going to end up Marco, with a good carbonara. Marco. Marco, then hold on. Let me get my final sip. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, let's go. So this is what we're going to be doing. We are going to make sure that the water boils. And I'm going to be increasing the temperature of my water so that it boils. We're going to be start cooking the guanciale. And as we cook the guanciale, and we boil the pasta, we are going to be doing our cream uh, with egg and cheese. We don't want to do the cream too much sooner because we risk spoiling the eggs and then um, you know that'll be bad. So we're going to be, to recap, cooking the guanciale as we're boiling the pasta while in the meanwhile, we do our egg and cheese cream uh, together handmade. The reason why it's very hard to find good carbonara, it is because Everybody messes up these steps. So now it gets real. All right, so first and foremost, what we want to do is turn on, uh, start cooking the guanciale with a very, very high flame. But we need to high make flame? sure that okay. it doesn't burn. High flame, yes. So we need to also make sure that it doesn't burn. And remember, uh, one of the things that's very important to do when cooking is to give lots of you know, love to the to what we're cooking. So we have to mix it, to stir it. We need to make sure that we pay attention. We pay attention to our ingredients. The recipe for a good dish and a good meal is giving attention to our in ingredients. They don't cook by themselves. We cook them. And so we have to be on top of them. Let's make sure that the guanciale becomes very, very 
crunchy. And now the fun okay. part, Sandeep, make sure that the temperature, the flame is high. And then let's drop some, let's deglaze our guanciale a little bit to melt the fat that in the meanwhile is sticking to the, to the pot. And now, you look at my guanciale, you see there is uh, some crunchiness, there, are, there is some pieces that are crunchy, there are the color, you can see from the color. Yeah. After the wine, after the wine has evaporated, I'm turning off my fire. So now, the fire is off, and the guanciale is uh, resting. Even when the flame is off, the guanciale is still cooking now, because the, the, the pan, it's still very hot. So let's uh let's take our pasta and pour mm. it into the water so it starts cooking. And then remember you have to mix it. And now we have a countdown. We have to get our sauce ready within the next nine minutes, eight minutes, or it's gonna be too late. Okay. How do I make the sauce? So what we're going to be doing is opening the eggs, but we only want the the yolk, we don't want the white part. So I'm gonna break up an egg, and then I'm gonna do this, this little game. I'm gonna shuffle the yolk from one part to another, and then drop it into my, into my final plate. So we only want to get the yolks and throw everything away here. And this is the magic of the carbonara. We have the yolk, right? We're going to be taking some black pepper and put it in there. And then once we have done the pepper, we are going to be taking a handful of the cheese and putting it into the yolk. And as we do it, we're going to be mixing it together because we want, we want to uh, create, we want to create the cream. We want to mix it and blend it together very well with the yolk. We have, we have eight minutes. We have time, but we can do it little by little. We can put some cheese little by little and then mix it together until the consistency gets thicker and thicker. Sandeep, you're following me? Yes, I am. I'm using the whisk instead. And I have put a handful of cheese. Um, am I going to be using all the cheese that um, we had grated? You want to have a very strong consistency. So right now, I, I put um, I put actually almost all of it, right? It, it's becoming thick. Look how thick it's becoming. Like it doesn't it doesn't fall from my fork. It falls very slowly. You see how thick it is? Oh, okay. That's the reason you use the fork. Let me take. Let me also. take. Also, look. look, this is a cream. Oh, wow. okay. Of egg, of egg, pecorino, and parmigiano. So now let's take a little bit of the cooking water and mix it just a little bit, just like a few drops of cooking water uh, uh. and mix it and put it in here so that we are easing a little bit that consistency. Got it, okay. With the cooking water, which in the meanwhile, tastes like pasta. It has the starch of the pasta and also tastes like the guanciale. So I am going to slowly remove all the little pieces of, of uh, guanciale that we put in there so so that so that I don't mistakenly eat them. You want the soft consistency, like a sauce, like this? That's perfect, that's perfect. We need to mix the sauce, the egg sauce with the pasta as the pasta is still hot, that is critical because the pasta, the, hot of the, the hotness of the pasta will cook the egg just the right amount um, as we're mixing it. So I was not joking when I said the timing is everything. Marco, as the pasta is cooking, I know that you are very, very critical about how the pasta should be al dente. And so I want to hear from you why that's important and how do you 
make sure that the pasta is truly and that they are not overcooked. Because I've heard from you so many times when we're eating in restaurants together that the pasta hasn't been cooked well. You know, pasta al dente means that the pasta is uh, has consistency, which means that it's on a little bit harder, not raw, but still a little bit harder when we eat it. We want the pasta to have consistency because otherwise the Italians say pasta tastes like glue. It's like these mashed potatoes of pasta, right? So we Italians don't don't eat it that way. Al dente, dente means teeth, which means that you can feel the hardness of the pasta with your teeth as you're as you're eating it. Al dente, you know, basically it means at, at the teeth touch. And um, and in order for us to determine if the pasta is cooked al dente or not, I think a rule of thumb is to always cook it one or two minutes less than the advertised time on the pasta package. But that's not enough. The final touch is always to try your pasta. We never know when the pasta is ready until we try it. So as it's cooking, take a piece of pasta out, make sure it's cooled down, and then try it. That's the final test. Once it's ready, it's ready. Remember that once you drain the pasta, the pasta doesn't become cold all of a sudden. The pasta is still hot. So even if it's not in the water, the pasta keeps cooking. So by the time you serve it to, to the table, the pasta is cooked a little bit more. That's why timing is everything. You have to take it when it's al dente. By the time you eat it, it has been cooking still in the meanwhile, and, in, and it becomes at the right point. Now, to determine if the pasta is al dente or not, you can try it or you can do another thing. You can take a piece of pasta, you can cut it in half, and if you see a white line in between the pasta, that white line means that the pasta is not fully cooked, which means that it's still al dente. If you don't see any white line, chances are you have overcooked your pasta. Do not overcook your pasta. Yeah, so Sandeep, how's it going? I am almost got the conchala pieces out. Once we're done with that, let me tell you what's going to happen next. What's happening next is critical in order to have a safe carbonara that's good to eat, that's cooked, that is tasty. If our sauce ends up not being, not being good enough because it's too dense and too thick when we mix the pasta, we can save some cooking water of the pasta right now in this teacup so that we can use it later. So I'm taking my camera to show you what I'm doing. This is my teacup. This is the pasta. I'm just filling it a little bit just in case I need it for later. So mm. we have the guanciale, the pan is off, the guanciale is crunchy and it's perfect. The pasta in two minutes is gonna be ready. We have our egg, cream and cheese all mixed together and we saved some cooking uh, water from the pasta and I have just a little bit left, cheese left later so that I can, I can you know, tune the consistency of my carbonara depending how I want it. And we have the wine ready to go with it. So I'm putting my camera here because we're going to be doing these very simple steps. We're going to be taking our pasta, pour it into the drain, into the pasta drainer, mm -hmm. and then like make sure that there is no water left and then put it into the guanciale pan. So we're going to be mixing the pasta that has been cooked into the same pan where we've been cooking the guanciale. The remaining water from the pasta, there's going to be always some water left. It is going to melt the residue, the fat residue that in the meanwhile has solidified at the bottom of the pan. And, and the heat of the pasta, which is very hot at that point, 100 degrees Celsius, it's still going to be eating, uh, cooking the uh, egg cream that we're going to be mixing in the meanwhile. These are very fast operations. We have to be fast. The pasta into the oh. drain, very, very quickly. Drain the, the remaining water mm -hmm. and put it into the guanciale pan. In the guanciale pan, mix it very fast. And after five seconds, take the egg cream and pour it all in into the same pan. We can also take a few pieces of bacon like this outside of the pan. I'm going to store it somewhere. Like I'm going to store it here so that we can prepare a good presentation for our dish. So look, I'm taking the water with the pasta and draining it. Now I'm taking the remaining pasta, make sure there's not much water left and putting it into the same pan where the guanciale is. Then 
I am going to be mixing it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Finally, I'm gonna be taking my egg plate and pour it into the same pan where the guanciale and the pasta are. And as I do that, I mix it very quickly. I have to mix it very quickly. All right. So and five mix seconds it. are done. Now let's put now to put the cream. And mix. take all of the cream. Let's take all of it and mix it. And it looks like right, this. I got the cream. Let me mix it and see how it's looking for you. The egg is now cooking, even if you cannot see it. It is critical yes. that the egg does not become that the egg does not become an omelet. It's still liquid, you see? Yeah, it is you're right. It's still liquid. It's not like um semi solid. And yeah. is this because we are mixing it really rapidly? Yes, that's right. And that's exactly what we want. And that's why the eggs have to be good quality. If the eggs are not good quality, obviously you can imagine what happens next. <laughs> And then finally, we take our pasta and we put it into our plate. Okay. Um, let's take all the guanciale pieces as well. I take some of, uh, of the cheese that I've left and, you know, put it a little bit on the pasta. And then I'm taking the guanciale I've saved on the side and also put it on top. Very crunchy. This one has not been mixed. We have pasta like in Rome, but in the US. Marco, how is this? That's perfect. Put, put some cheese on top. Put some cheese on top. You know, Sandeep, in this moment right now, yeah. this is the best carbonaras on the, in the US. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Sandeep, the carburetor meeting right now, it's so good that it is above than average quality in Rome itself. I think this is the best carbonara I have ever made ever in my life. It's so good. Okay. This is the best other than leg of goat after the leg of goat this is the next best thing i've ever made in my life you know we had the pasta we're having amazing wine you know what's the next thing to do for italian tradition it's taking a little nap <laughs> <laughs> can you tell the difference that guanciale makes instead of bacon or pancetta the gonchala is crunchy, but not too crunchy. Like it's not like burnt crunchy. The gonchala is like has both the crunchiness and the softness. Like it's layers of crunchiness and softness along with the al dente pasta, which gives it like more harmony than pasta and, uh, and, and bacon in my mind. So Sandeep, you know, I'm Italian and I think I can confidently say that this quality of carbonara that we try today, we won't find anywhere, anywhere outside of Rome. And even within Rome, it would be hard to find. This, and I've tried plenty of carbonaras, I'm Italian. This is one of the best carbonaras that I've ever tried in my life. No restaurant, no restaurant in the world, but a few in Rome that have been doing it for a hundred of years can do better than this. You all heard this from Marco himself, and I can tell you for sure that if he's saying this, it's a huge deal. And 
from our kitchen to yours. This is an amazing food celebration. Great two days of Kong Summit. And what a way to end it. Thanks for coming at Kong Summit. We spoke about connectivity. We spoke about Kong Connect. We spoke about service meshes and gateways. We spoke about and talked about lots of different things, including Carbonara. Cheers and see you at the next one. That's it. All right. Till the next one. Cheers.